Right, we're answering another question today, and this one is a technical one. On Monday, someone had asked me a question that I needed to really, really think about how I was going to produce a video on this, um, because there is a, uh, a visual aspect. And that question is, can police be removed? I mean, you see them on trousers, they have to be added in the cut, but after all, it's just extra cloth, right? I mean, what's the deal? Well, I'm going to cut to an overhead camera and I'm going to explain it step by step. All right, guys, so to properly explain how to actually eliminate pleats, I have to show you um, how pleats are actually cut. What actual changes in the cloth to the pattern, so pattern then cloth, are taken into account when we actually do this. So this is sort of step one. Okay, so I just did like a sort of a half, not a half scale, but a very, very small scale version of like my pan draft. And I rounded out past the knee because I don't really need that. So this is a flat front trouser. Okay, so there's two main different ways of putting in pleats. And um, they're quite they're quite similar in that they are similar in finished size, but they are not similar as far as zero points, which will be uh, a very big, um, a very big reason of why or why not you cannot or, like remove these pleats. So just to give you an idea, I'm just going to put a piece of paper down. So I have my, my little template there, my, my starting, and I'm just going to put, actually I'll do it like this. I'll do it. I'll do it a little bit like that. So I'm just going to put a starting line, which is going to be uh, the crease line. So I have my crease line here. And so what I'm saying is that uh, this will be my finished pattern, right? So this is the pattern that I cut out of paper. Imagine that this is cloth. Okay, so this is, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just doing this for, for visual sake, but it should be running lengthwise, etc, etc. So this is the grain of the cloth, okay? So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the pattern on here like this. So you can either draft pleats directly from the um, on the paper, or you can do it uh, sort of in this fashion. And this is sort of how I like to do it because I feel like if the client orders, you know, um, a flat front, I have this. If he orders a pleat and I want to make a flat front, I can't do that. You know what I mean? Well, I can, but it'll just be a little bit more of a more of a headache. So to show you guys how I manipulate this to do a pattern, this is the way that is not um, not, you know, uh, so, uh, what's it called? Commonly seen. So whenever you see pleats on trousers, that's sort of like, uh, for, uh, reverse, for reverse pleats and they kind of like bend towards the side seam. This is actually how they're made. And the difference is Im important that it's recognizable. So Let's say that this distance here, this is not what it is in real life, but let's say this is one inch, right? So I want to make a one inch pleat, which means I need to add two inches more of cloth. So essentially what I'm going to be doing is from here to here, I'm virtually cutting down the pattern and I'm splitting it open and I'm hinging it right in this point. So what I like to do is, if this was a pattern, I would just put, um, you know, my, uh, my all in there or like a pencil. And I'm just going to kick out this pattern to right there. And then I'm going to draw in. There you go. So that's one side. So I'm going to reset it. And then I'm also going to pivot outward. Stop there. I'm going to retrace. Now. This is one way of doing it. All right, so I still have my crease. Essentially what happens in this one is the fabric is picked up and then folded over and then tacked close to the side seam if it's a reverse pleat. The second case scenario, or another way of doing this, which you'll have to be really careful about because it may add too much fullness uh, overall. And also this too will also affect the grain closest to the crotch or closest to the fly. So again, too, I'm gonna do the same method, but instead of Pivoting at the knee, all I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in this, and I'm going to draw in this, so that's knee to, knee to uh, crutch line, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to transmute the pattern, let me just put in my little balance points here, I'm going to transmute the pattern just outward. Yeah, that's the same way you say it. Then I'm going to draw in the crotch, I'm going to draw in here, 
And then the same thing here, I'm going to move this out. And you'll notice that there's a disparage now between those two lines. But what happens here is that this will now get blended. Let's see if I can show you guys this properly. That'll get blended there. And then that'll get blended up. So this allows the pattern to be picked up and folded over. And I have an example of that right here. This is sort of like, um, for those of you who grew up with Art Attack, this is sort of like a, and I just did a quick one just to show you. So here's my original, and here's the, the one with the pleat that folds over to the side. And, and this is actually the action that would be done. So you would fold the entire pattern or the entire cloth on its crease line. And then essentially what you just do is pick up the cloth and fold it over. And then it will be tacked right here, you know, right through the cloth. So that's essentially what you have. But you can also see how it affected the, um, uh, what's it called, the, uh, the crutch line. But in any case, that's a way of, of, of sort of like dislocating or relocating the, um, the pleat so it's off to the side. Now, if you've ever seen a pair of trousers that has, um, for example, like the, the reverse pleat, so the pleat that opens to the side seam is parallel to the fly line, this would look something like this. So again, I'm going to draw back in. Let me just do it like this because I'm almost ah, save some paper, save some, save some papier. So again, too, this would be like if I had a stripe on a cloth, I would line it up with the um, the crease line on my trouser pattern. So in this one, the front edge, center front and inseam is all just put together. So now I know I need two inches, and let's say I'm gonna put another, I'm gonna put another dart right here. Another dart uh, pleat, so I'm gonna do another one inch. So all I'm gonna do is, I'm just going to slide the pattern over two inches. That's one, two. I can actually just continue this line. So one, two, that's the pleat. And then uh, from over here, I'm just gonna put a mark, and I know that's gonna be an inch. And then I'm gonna line that up. I'm gonna put a mark there. So I'm also gonna put a line on, whoops. I'm also gonna put a line on the crotch line. So essentially I know how much I'm going over. So let me just, let me just do this as a, as a very broad way of doing it. So there you are. So essentially what I have here is, whoop, I have a pleat here, that's two inches, and then I have a smaller pleat, which is here, which is one inch, right? So I've moved all this over, but there's not really a whole lot of change to right there. This is where this comes in. So again, the fabric is being pushed, the cloth is being pushed underneath, so no change to the front. So that's one over, right? Let me see if I can fold this the best I can. And then you have another one that goes over. And again, too, I'm gonna see if I can fold this the best I can. Maybe I do this fast. Okay. All right. So there you have it. That's what you have there. So this method works for reverse pleats and for uh, like uh, normal pleats as well, because the fabric is just being pushed on the other side. So essentially I can just transmute that amount and push it towards the front. That's why similarly um, uh, forward facing pleats uh, always look like they're bending towards center front. It's just because it's just a cloth piling on top and piling on top. This is not an exact, this is not exactly how I would cut pleats because I would still need to add overages for the crotch and, and overages for the, the hip. I'm just explaining where the cloth goes. So now if I actually look at these two put together, all right, there's one. And there's one, you know, they look, if I just put my ruler over both of them to hold the pleat shut, they look quite similar, right? I mean, they look similar, but there becomes a problem. And that problem is this, I open these up, I lay them on top. Well, heck, they look pretty similar, don't they? You know, I mean, I have an extra inch on this one for the double pleat. But I mean that, for all intents and purposes, that looks that looks pretty similar, wouldn't you say? But then the problem arises right here. 
that's my crease line where the straight of the grain is going to go. But my crease line here is off by this amount. So that's another inch off. And what happened is because, because I split this open, my original crease line was here. Sorry, it was right here, but because these two come together, it displaces it. Now, why is that important? I've gone through all this trouble uh, just to tell you guys why this is important. And the reason is, is that if you're trying to remove a pleat that has been split down the crease line like this, and overage has been allowed to the center front and side seam, if you attempt to push out, we're not going to even talk about like removing and, and adding in the pocket again. You're just going to have to suspend your disbelief that, let's say for all, like let's say the easiest one is that they just had a side seam pocket and they could just be put back in, you know, whatever, if you got a, a better tailor. Um, for this one that has been picked up and laid down, it's not enough just to remove two inches away from here because essentially what that does is it makes the front extremely tiny because you have all of this left over at the front you need to deal with. Um, especially if you have a checker or a stripe, this could seriously move the, um, the in, uh, integrity of the grain on the fly. Uh, but with this, essentially all I've just done is just added more cloth to here. So then you would just need to open the waistband, undo the side seam, you know, you'd, you'd measure this when the, the pleats are closed. Whatever amount that is, the tailor would just go chip, 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 chip. I'm doing sound effects for uh, effect, for uh, uh, gravitas. And then that would be cut away. They put it in a new pocket, sew the side seam, sew the waistband. Bob's your uncle and Betty's your aunt. So yes, it is possible to, uh, to remove pleats. It can be done. Well, I hope you guys have learned a little something and I hope that definitely answered your question. Uh, feel free to keep those questions coming in via DMs or comments or uh, the Ask Me Anything things I put up my Instagram stories. But uh, that's it for now. Take care, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.